Ukraine. Ukrainian oligarch who is fighting extradition to the U.S. says he'd rather choose option two, it seems. He's asking the U.S. to throw out the charges against him so he can fight for his country instead. He made his fortune buying cheap gas from former Soviet states, which flowed to Ukraine through Putin's Russia. And this is where all your coordination of the war effort is happening. Yes, here. In his war room, it seems clear his vast wealth is being unleashed against Putin's war. His new TV channel, Freedom, is streaming on the war room wall. Ah, oh, those are the new tanks. Yes. <laughs> A joint venture with other Ukrainian media bosses. A Russian language channel to counter the Kremlin's anti-Western propaganda. From here, Firtash is repurposing his business empire, pitting it against Putin. Our plants that used to produce gas equipment before today have been transformed to produce anti-tank barriers. It's a story straight out of a spy novel. A Ukrainian oil baron who made billions thanks to close relationships with Russian President Vladimir Putin, now pledging he will unleash his vast wealth to help the Ukrainian war effort but only if the United States Department of Justice drops a nearly decade-long attempt to prosecute him for bribery. Dmitry Firtash swears he's motivated solely by patriotism. The Biden administration says he's motivated mainly by a desire to avoid a lengthy prison sentence after eight years fighting extradition in Europe. Putin's war isn't Firtash's only fight right now. He's facing extradition to the U.S. on international racketeering and conspiracy charges involving bribery, an eight-year battle that could be decided soon. They don't even allege that I had bribed somebody, but only intended to organize this. But are they right? A hundred percent no. There was no reason for that. Because for me to bribe someone, I need to profit from this. I never benefited from this. The charges are convoluted, allegations of bribes for Indian officials to sell him cut-priced titanium for a U.S. aircraft company. Firtash believes his problems with the United States are geopolitical and began more than a decade ago when he was backing Ukrainian politicians perceived as pro-Putin. Now both his fights are fusing into a perfect storm. He's been stuck in Austria since his arrest on the US charges in 2014. This isn't the first time Dmitry Firtash has crossed paths with the United States. And the outcomes almost never spell good news for the oligarch. Firtash first raised American eyebrows when he was caught attempting to bribe an Indian titanium company. Firtash needed metal, a lot of it, and it didn't need to be good. There's just one problem. The United States argues that Firtash was attempting to broker the deal so that he could sell the low-quality titanium to aerospace company Boeing and profit from a lucrative federal defense contract while leaving Boeing with subpar metal. Firtash also pops up again in 2019, this time as part of Donald Trump's attempt to extort the Ukrainian government for political dirt on Joe and Hunter Biden. Unlike in 2014, Firtash found Rudy Giuliani this time and Giuliani was more than happy to help him plead his case to the Justice Department. And in return, Firtash became the source of the Burisma scandal, the debunked conspiracy theory that Joe and Hunter Biden were involved in a shady energy deal in Ukraine. But Giuliani went even further. He secured a rare one-on-one -on -one meeting with Attorney General Bill Barr to plead Firtash's case directly. Giuliani's behavior with Firtash concerned the CIA so much that it issued a rare whistleblower report to the Attorney General, remarking on Giuliani's activity in Ukraine and expressing concern about his friendship with Firtash. Now, Firtash says, that's just another misunderstanding. In the eyes of some Ukraine watchers, Firtash is at least walking the walk. He's converted several of his factories to produce war goods the government urgently needs, and he's founded a new television network, Truth, meant to counter Russian propaganda. But the U.S. Department of Justice notes Firtash has managed to do all of this without having his charges dropped. And they speculate that Firtash's recent bout of patriotism has more to do with the fact that the legal clock may finally be running out. After years of avoiding extradition through trickery and legal tactics, it now seems increasingly certain Firtash will be extradited to Chicago in just a matter of months. It's no surprise that he's eager to do anything possible
to avoid that situation. At first glance, it may seem tempting for the United States to work with Firtash. After all, he already has critical infrastructure on the ground in Ukraine, and he didn't really successfully bribe anyone. He simply tried. But partnering with Firtash is a short-sighted plan that hurts American national security and weakens our democratic values. And anyway, why would the Biden administration be eager to partner with someone who only three years ago was actively engaged in an effort to meddle in the U.S. presidential election in favor of Donald Trump? And perhaps the most interesting thing about Firtash is something he revealed himself in an interview with CNN. When asked about his business dealings and how he seems to keep finding himself in all of these scandals, Firtash replied bluntly, I'm a businessman. I find ways to make money. In a conflict so deeply connected to oligarchy and authoritarianism, the United States would be moving backwards by humoring an oligarch who plainly has no respect for the rule of law. The last time we trusted a man who said he was a businessman, whose job was to make money, we ended up with Donald Trump. Now the United States has a chance to make a better choice. They should.